so yep just that 650 okay let's uh let's back back out of here I'm going to there the service data here comes with the scan tool since we have a subscription still let me put in the info here um let's see let's see circuit open so we've got a 650 circuit open open high resistance uh, let's see the malfunction indicator lamp illuminates informed driver emissions faults yada yada uh, ECM control module turns on the mill by grounding the mill control circuit when emission default occurs. Alright. Conditions for setting. Low voltage in the driver off state. So when it's turned off, the ECM should see 12 volts on the control wire until it goes to ground, in which case it takes it to zero. So pretty, uh, pretty simple here. Pretty straightforward. Um, I don't know if we have, you know, we don't want to read all this, it's all nonsense stuff here. Um, let me get us a diagram here. Went under powers ground, serial data, and mill. Uh, let's see, here is our instrument panel, that's our engine light. That's a symbol for an LED. Okay, so we know it's an LED, at least based on the symbol engine control module ground side switch so just like it uh, like it stated there and we have connector x111 we can see where that lives so we don't have to uh, you know pull the cluster out and then uh, that's probably the cluster connector would be my guess let's go like this whoops whoa dude Back back up here, instrument cluster schematics, powers, grounds, gauges. Oops. Indicators and lighting. Find it here. I just wondered if, no, well, maybe X111 isn't, because I would have thought these other connectors would have ran through there. So let's just see, uh, see if we can figure out where X111 lives. Be the easiest thing. Uh, let's see, Mr. Electrical, X111. Looks just like the connector we did the other day in that ordeal we were working on here. So we want to close that because we want to see where it lives more than anything. Master component list here should tell us. And again, this is the service info that comes with this tool. I think it's made by motor. This is all OEM information though, so it looks the same whether we're doing it here on Identifix or Mitchell. Let's see, X111 in engine compartment, inboard of the left front strut tower, engine harness to the instrument panel, 16 cavities. Let's see if we can see it on the little picture here. X111 doesn't give us a number, so we'll say number one, two, three, four. So number four, we're going to call X111. Okay, they show it back there by the brake booster. All right. Oh, that's the picture we already had. So let's see if we can see that sucker out there and uh, see what happens out there, X111. Let's go back in here and we should be able to see if the ECM is commanding it on, we may even be able to turn it on and off, then we can check to see if it's functioning. What 
actuator test. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, it may be under, um, maybe in the instrument cluster is probably what we're going to need to do. Let me uh, poke around and see if we can find the bi-directional for this thing. I don't have to poke around and stare me right in the face on the screen. Instrument panel indicators, mill. Okay, commanded state none. Mill indicator commanded on. All right. Well, so we can we can turn it on, and now we can turn it off. Okay. That's all we needed. Let's go find that connector and make sure the PCM has control up to it. I got something going on here. The connector on the mass airflow must have been broke, so they've got it zip tied. We'll have to kind of pick our battle there. Let's see, they've got it just kind of run around. We'll just pull the zip tie up like that. I'll plug it. Put that there. Looks like one bolt. There. Well, let's just pull the lid off. I grabbed the torque spit here. We'll pull the lid off because I can't remember if there's a bolt down in the middle of these. I don't take a lot of these out cars here. So I'm not super familiar. At least I don't remember. Got a lot of dust on the clean air side. Almost like it sat with the uh, must have sat with the lid off it for some time. Unless it doesn't seal that good. But, hmm, seems like it should. Oh no, it looks like body shop dust. Might have, might have sat like that for a while. And yeah, we juiced her up a bit. Needed. I see some buck connectors down here. It doesn't mean anything, but it might mean something. Interesting. A couple crimping seals there. Huh. I don't think that. This is our connector we're going for. This little guy right here. That 20 cavity or whatever it was. Just looking around to see if it, uh, you know, we know this car was in an accident. The front end was all smashed in. But I don't see any where anything was done over here you know you can see where stuff was removed and ground wires were taken off and training lines were put in there's some loose bolts on the training right there um, zip ties paint overspray on this whatever this is yeah paint and primer overspray so you know obviously it's had stuff done buffing compound on the hood all right Interesting, let's carry on. Yeah. All kinds of body shop debris. That kind of stuff. That harness wasn't put back. So yeah, lots of, lots of evidence that things have been done here. Um, well, let's find out. Let's grab our scan tool, see which which wires, which which color we're supposed to be dealing with. Make sure the ECM has control, or maybe doesn't. Hopefully, it's just a broken wire here. That'd be great. Back here. Whoops. 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 X one eleven. 
Uh, APP Mill Control Brown with white. Excuse me. Every time I start working, I start sneezing. That can only mean one thing. You're allergic to work. Brown with white. Is there any other brown with whites on there? Do we even need to know the pin number? We probably should, just to be sure. A, B, C, D, F, G, H, I, J, K. It's next to the Elemento. It is the L. Brown white. What color's next to it? Tan and black. It's a brown and white between the tan and black. Must be on the other side. Might, might have my head right in your guys' way. Brown, there's a black, brown and white, and a tan. Okay, so it's on this side. Huzzah! We found it. We have no needle in our hat. Again. Stand by. We got us a needle. We got a back probe in to the brown and white. Hopefully get something feels good here. Not 100% not confident with that. And we have a snap-on, not a sponsor, of course. LED test light. Not an advocate of the LED test light, but we have this one because we're testing an actual LED circuit, it works. I've got it hooked to power. Anything we touch at the ground, it lights up nice and white. So we've got it there. And we're gonna go back to our scan tool. Oops, whoa, dude, come on, man. And it says right now that the mill is commanded on. We're gonna turn it on anyways, just to be sure. And we're not lighting up. Uh oh, either we have some kind of funky funk going on or we have a bad connection here. I wanna make sure that we don't have a bad connection. There's our brown and white wire. I wanna, I wanna poke our wire, but I wanna poke it where I can fix it. We're gonna come down the wire just a teeny tiny bit here. We're still commanded on. And I've got no light. How about this? How about this, he says. Let's take our test light. I'm gonna move my test light to the ground. Actually, I'm gonna leave this one on positive. I wanna go get a better test light, stand by. We're gonna get a high current test light. Higher current, this is only 750 milliamps. And then we're gonna take, and we're gonna back probe it again instead of poking into the wire there, we already poked it. We're gonna just back probe here. I assume we're in there getting a good connection. I've been wrong before. We're gonna stick this test light there like that, which grounds it, which if we do have good connection, should in turn turn on the mill. Let me just stick my face inside here real quick. Ta-da! We got a check engine light now, boys. Let me go show you. Raw and uncut, so we don't have trust issues. Wham, bam, bino. Engine light there. If we remove our test light, that's the sound it makes removing a test light. Our light should go out because we took away the ground. And the light's out. Okay? What's that tell us, boys? Tell us we either got a bad main brain here, the brain box, as the other shop calls it, or we have a broken wire, which, looking at this shenanigans, is plausible. What's the next step? Well, couple options. This has got me curious here. Uh, that's where I want to have a look. Next step, technically, would be going to the main brain box. Gibbs rule number 39, no such thing as coincidence. 
I see some tape here. <laughs> Guys, got to know. <laughs> I got to know. So let's just have a look in the area that's already a little bit suspect. I got to know. That's from Dirty Harry. That's where he says, Are you feeling lucky, punk? Let's just have a look see. Let's find our brown with white wire here and just give it a tug. That one's brown with white. I think there's only one brown with white. We get a little guy up here. Get our fingers underneath it. Feels pretty stout in that direction. What about this? Oh! <laughs> well, <laughs> well, lady, I think I see your problem. I think I see your problem, lady. Let me get this uh, zip tie off here. Whatever this held on to. I see this lady's problem. Whoever wired this up, they must have been going to the bar with Mima. But I think they did some uh, color swaps. did some color swapping. Okay. Let's see all the sin that lies under here. Cause something ain't right. Oh no, never mind. That's a brown. I was gonna say I see a wire here that is brown with white going to a wire that is yellow with brown. What the world? There's two different browns with whites. I would think, I didn't even consider this. This purple wire goes into this red wire. What the world? This looks like an OG connector. Oh no, that's brown and white on that side. Interesting, so probably what happened here is they took pins from something else to repair these two. Okay, wild goose chase for me for a minute just happened to be our wire color. That brown with white there. We know that the brown with white that goes up to X111, we know that's the correct wire that's in the cavity uh, because we grounded it and we know this is the correct wire. I thought I was gonna untape it and find some sin lying down here where it got uh, crisscrossed. I suppose we could still have a bad main brain. Let's look for other tape. There's lots of other tape. <laughs> Who's this guy fooling? I'm only fooling myself here. We know we're not looking for a short. If it was, uh, you know, short at the ground, what would we have? Well, you're right. We would have a mill that's on all the time. Huh? There's that. Test light with voice grips, Astro tools. Probed. Let me see if the light's on. Ruh row, the light's not on. That means our problem's between here and there. Oh. Or we're on the wrong brown and white wire, one or the other. Or we don't have a good brown on our test light. There's always that. Oh, test light lights. Interesting. 
I'm gonna go with the fact, first fact, that we're on the wrong brown or white. Yes, we are, because there's actually two of them in that harness. Obviously, because there's one here and one there. Gosh. Hey, welcome to Amateur Hour at South Main Auto. Took a 50-50 chance, we failed. Let's try this one. <laughs> now we've got two wires. The little pricklies we gotta fix. Test laid in the hole. Survey says, we got the mill. We got the mill. So our problem is from here to the main brain box. I just like saying that. Okay, I'm gonna leave the probe right on here. Actually, I'm gonna grab a zip tie. I'm gonna throw a zip tie around that so I don't forget to fix those two wires. Easiest way to remember, I'm just gonna grab both of those. Okay, you take this uh, Pierce probe off there. Boy, you can hardly ever see that stinking little tiny holes. But they do need to be covered up prior to being covered up. Otherwise, someday somebody will hate me. Probably me. I hate myself. Let's find out which connector that that goes into. And then we'll know, we'll know what we need to know. Ah, let's see. Clicking the back arrow here. And what do we want here? Diagrams. Uh, oh, that was X111. I think we had the diagram here in a P0650. There's that. Go here. Go to all. Oops. 650. They got diagrams here. Engine control schematics, powers, grounds, and mill. And that says the cluster. And that goes to pin number 46, uh, connector X1, pin 46. As you can see there, pin 46. And then we swipe, swipe, and connector X1. Which one's X1? Well, I don't know what's so going to be the top one and or the bottom one. What we'll do, oops, my truck's beeping at me out there, pin 46, GM's usually pretty good about numbering their stuff. Let me get something to pop the connector apart here. So I pulled the lid off the top one. I got my glasses and I've got a light <laughs> you scumbags look at this guess what it's a brown and white wire look at these dirty dogs welcome to the auction baby at least they put heat shrink on it ah, what a bunch of shit bags I tell you this is the kind of shenanigans we deal with. Should have went here first. Should have known. They bought it at auction with almost no miles on it. That's funny. That's ha ha funny. Man, left the zip tie on it. Probably never even knew it had a code in it until he started checking out the ABS stuff. There it is. There's both halves of our wire. You want to fix an engine light? Well, this is how you don't do it. This is how you do it if you have no diagnostic skills. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Well, that kind of stinks. Let's see if we can just pull up enough wire. Give it the old, get the, the old wire stretcher. We'll go get a pair of snippers. Slide the old heat shrink right off there. There's the heat shrink all gone. Mm -hmm. Might even be able to do it without even unplugging it. We're just gonna I go with like a Sue. We're just gonna touch these babies together for right now. Oh, 
Okay, the wires are touching. Let's to go see if our light works. We're gonna do it raw and uncut here again. My pop's got gotcha. you. Let's take our Harbor Freight icon. Let's go over here. Mill on. It says it's supposed to be on. It's on. You're a real turn off, man. It's off. Ay, ay, ay. Yep. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd like to say it's my first time I've seen it. I'm relying. Cut this down. Got us a little piece of heat shrink here ourselves. A little on the long side. I don't want to take all that tape and junk off it. Alright, let's not pretend you can see. Put the glasses back on here. Trim back the copper a little. Going to classic barrel connector. Stick it on, give it a pinch. Heat shrink. On to the next one. Give it a pinch. Heat shrink it up. shrink it down wait for it to cool cut the zip tie replace it with another zip tie so everything's under the bundle and then put together what you took apart add a couple red herrings over there as far as the uh, previously repaired wires go kind of sent us down the wrong path awesome would I do it any differently, knowing what I know? Yeah, I would because I know what I know now, so of course I'd do it different. Uh, I figured this was the easiest. This is easier than pulling the cluster, in my opinion. And we would have ended up back out here anyway, so. All right, give me a few minutes to get things straightened up here. I'm gonna fix my two wires there, and then where I poked it up here, kind of get things taped up, wrapped up, looking nice give you a look at the final fix before we uh, put it all back together through the zip tie on there's our barrel connector our heat shrink with adhesive put the cover on everything went together fine all taped up put back where it belongs shut the box back in put the bolt back in oh okay Woo! make sure sure we didn't lose our wire down there somewhere and I just got thinking Looking at my uh, LED test light here. Out of probably 2,000 self-made auto videos that are out currently, over 10 years in production, October 2014, 10 years next month, it's probably the first time it's ever made a debut. <laughs> However, the humble test light, the incandescent test light, we've gone through several of them over the years. In the SMA videos and you have to think about it folks people oftentimes like you know computer killing you know test lights yada yada we've talked about that a million times big myth you can't name one circuit that this will take out on a PCM uh, I can name one but I'm not gonna share it with you because nobody else will ever name it at any rate we use them to substitute load that's what we do when we're using light bulbs incandescent bulbs in test lights or light bulbs you know on a stick we're just using them simply to simulate uh, different different current loads current draws on different circuits we were testing an LED circuit this time 
extremely rare for us to do that. So what's the perfect substitute for an LED circuit? An LED, okay, this or a voltmeter. Probably could have used a 100 milliamp or 150 milliamp test light. I don't know, and I didn't want to get led astray because I know what the circuit was designed to run, so we substituted the appropriate load. So that's why we went that route. I don't know who did that. I can't imagine the guy who owns it did it to his own mother. Let's hope not. Let's hope Ma doesn't find out. And, uh, and if he did, why would he pay me, you know, a hundred bucks to go through and figure out what's wrong with it? I don't know. It seems like a waste of money to get a silly video. So somebody did, but not your average Joe dirtbag, because they knew what wire it was. They cut it where it's fixable. They cut it where it was obvious, and they, you know, put the heat shrink on it. So bravo to that guy. Typically, what you'll see. Uh, with our used car guys, not not that my used car guys do it, but they get scammed by them at the auction. I'll say the, the auction cars, they come in and the auction people will take whoever sent it to the auction, pulls a cluster out and then they get in there. They, they still use a test light, but they use it to go <laughs> across the circuit board and they scratch the LED off it or, or cut the trace on the circuit board. That's what we see. And back in the day, when I was just a young buck, what they used to do is take a drill tip cleaner and they would actually drill through the cluster and through that little point and then stick a little nail in there and you know, blow the bulb. So there's all kinds of ways to get around it. This is, the, this is the best cleanest way to get rid of your check engine light is just cut the wire, cut it where it can be fixed, put little repair ends on it, sign your work. <laughs> Maybe the guy did it's watching this video and he's laughing and laughing. I hope he is. I get paid either way. <laughs> We're in. Whoa, sorry, bumpy there. Hey, look at that mill. <laughs> it works. Great, now we got fans on high speed. What the world could that mean? Didn't leave anything unhooked. Oh boy. Lots of them codes. That's because we had the mass airflow unhooked. I thought we plugged it back up. I thought we plugged it back up. things so with that being said we're gonna go to auto code scan let her go through everything here go from there let that finish getting a lot of green lights I think we're gonna be happy car does sound like it needs a battery though I've had to maintain her on it the entire time here once we were working under the hood uh, but that's it. So the good news is the hood's open, it's dinging at us. The good news is that the wheel bearing took care of the that action and all the lights there. And then now Mima has a, uh, I assume she's somebody's Mima, has a uh, engine light. So we're good. Now that can drive her nuts, which in turn is going to drive the sun nuts, which might just cut the wire again. The way he quits calling her. Quits calling me, Ma. Um. So yeah, that's that. We're gonna leave it at that, folks. Looks like it works. Kind of a silly one, but it's everyday stuff. This is what we do. And I know what you do. And that's head to the comment section. Questions, comments, Insta, Facebook. You guys know where to find us. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.